To start this off, we're going to preheat our oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then with 1.5 kilos or 3.3 pounds of Granny Smith apples, remove both the top and the bottom, and peel the skin. Then with any scraps, you can put these into a compost bin. If you don't have a peeler, do the same by removing the top and the bottom, and then on a slight angle, you can slice the skin off. Once peeled, we're then going to slice around the core. And then we can also place the core into a compost bin. Once sliced, largely dice the apples into even sized pieces, and place them into a large pot or saucepan. Add in the zest of one lemon, one hundred grams of unrefined caster sugar or white caster sugar, and one teaspoon or one gram of ground cinnamon, which is completely optional. Place the pot onto your stovetop over a medium heat, and give it a nice mix until all the apples are completely coated in the sugar and cinnamon. Pop on a lid and allow it to stew for 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, remove the lid and give the mixture a stir. Pop the lid back on and allow it to stew for a further 2 minutes. After 5 minutes total, remove the lid and give it another stir and the apple should be nice and soft but not breaking apart. Then remove the pot from the heat and allow it to cool down slightly. In the meantime, to make the crumble, in a large mixing bowl, add in 100 grams of cold unsalted butter along with 200 grams of plain all-purpose flour. Using clean hands, rub your fingertips into the butter and flour until it resembles coarse breadcrumbs. Once achieved, add in 50 grams of either unrefined caster sugar or white caster sugar. Give it one final mix together. And now let's assemble. Pour the apple mixture into a 38cm by 22cm baking dish. Spread it all out so it all sits evenly and flat, and then sprinkle over the crumble mix. Using a fork or a spoon, spread the crumble around so that all of the apples are evenly covered. Give the dish a wipe just to ensure nothing burns on the sides, and then bake this in your preheated oven for 25 to 30 minutes or until it's beautifully golden brown. Whilst the crumble's baking away, let's make some custard. In a small to medium sized bowl, add 4 free range egg yolks and 100 grams of either unrefined caster sugar or white caster sugar. Then whisk this together until smooth, creamy and pale. And then once that's done, just pop it aside. Then here I have one fresh vanilla pod, I'm just going to slice it down the centre And we're only going to be using half, so I'm going to reserve the other half for another recipe. With the back of a knife, I'm just going to scrape the inside of the pod to extract the seeds. Once that's done, place the pod and the seeds into a small saucepan. And if you can't get hold of vanilla pods, you can substitute it for 1.5 teaspoons or 7 milliliters of vanilla extract. Then into the saucepan, we're going to add 200 milliliters of full cream and 400 milliliters of whole milk. Place the saucepan onto your stovetop over a medium heat and whisk frequently until it comes to just under a simmer. Once you start to see some bubbles on the side, turn it off the heat, remove it from the stovetop, and slowly pour it into the egg and sugar mixture. We can leave the vanilla pod in the saucepan as we're going to be adding the mixture back in. Whisk the mixture until fully combined, and the reason that we do this is to control the heat. If we added the egg mixture to the saucepan, it's more likely to curdle. Once mixed, pour the mixture back into the saucepan and make sure not to leave behind any of those delicious vanilla seeds. Place the saucepan back onto your stovetop over a low heat and continuously mix for 5 minutes or until it thickly coats the back of a spoon, or in this case a spatula. And unfortunately you have to continuously mix this, otherwise the mixture will curdle and you'll end up with chunks of milk and egg throughout your custard. After 5 minutes of stirring and the custard is thickly coating the spoon or spatula, Immediately remove it from the heat and place the bottom of your saucepan into a bowl of icy cold water and mix it around for 20 seconds. This will shock the custard and prevent it from cooking any further and possibly curdling. We can then remove the vanilla pod and just discard. 
I would then suggest pouring it into a jar or container until you're ready to serve. This will also allow for it to cool down, and if you have any leftover custard, it can be easily stored in your fridge. But personally, I find that this is the perfect amount of custard for the amount of crumble that we've made. Then after 30 minutes, our apple crumble is looking beautifully golden brown. We can then either choose to allow it to cool down for about 10 minutes, or we can serve it up straight away. Then drizzle over that delicious custard, and we can then dig in. That is seriously so good. The apples are the perfect texture, not too soft and still have a bite to them. They're not too sweet and the cinnamon adds a fantastic flavor. The crumble is amazing, it has an awesome crunch on it, and in my opinion, it's the best part of this dish. Then to top it off is a silky smooth custard that really completes it. And like I said, if you prefer a thicker crumble, it can easily be doubled. This recipe serves six portions and can be placed in the fridge for up to five days, and it can also be frozen for up to two months. But with freezing the crumble, it will become slightly soggy. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome recipes, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching everybody, stay safe and enjoy.